Okay. Okay. Pitch. Um, just for the for the shows from today and through the seventh, we're going to be selling Mistborn. So if you haven't read Mistborn, you should. It's pretty awesome if you like fantasy novels. Um, it's like uh, Dickensian Hell, uh, that with uh, with people who eat magic or meat <laughs> eat metal to create magic. This is the poster um, we're this giving. This is the poster. This is the Gen Con only poster we're doing. Uh, so that's one thing. If you get it here, obviously you get the poster. Uh, you get one of these lovely physical primers. Covered by Ben McSweeney, the guy that did the cover of Fantasy Craft. Fantasy Craft. Mm -hmm, yeah, and kind of. And it's in uh, every single piece of art in the book is by Ben. Right. Yeah. So he's illustrated because he actually does a lot of work with Brandon directly. Mm -hmm. uh, the book is going to have original fiction by Brandon Sanderson. Um, as well as a bunch of other authors. Uh, we've got uh, Will Hindmarch is our line developer. Some of you guys might know him from this little game called Vampire, uh, Feng Shui, uh, et cetera. He's done some work for smaller companies Yeah, before. we plucked him out of obscurity. Um, and <laughs> uh, yeah, and so it, it's come together pretty awesome. It's, got, it's good if you don't know the world. Uh, we've got plenty of stuff to introduce you to what, what Mistborn is and what the world's like and everything else. Um, and uh, then we have all sorts of new stuff. If you're already a fan, um, we have expanded all of Ferrochemy, um, all of Hemalurgy that Brandon had made a decision about yet. The, the important thing here, especially for the folks at home, is that uh, the, the, the cornerstone of the entire setting is, uh, is its magic system. Right. And the magic system wasn't fully fleshed out in the novels because it was fleshed out at the rate of plot. And so there were holes. And one of the beauties, uh, beautiful things about putting together a role-playing game is that we were able to go back to Brandon and say, so these holes, are you comfortable with filling them now? And he was. So we have all sorts of, of new effects that have never been seen before in the property. Right, yeah. Which so is really cool. Using allomancy to bend time, things like that. So there's, there's pretty cool stuff. It's all fleshed out. Um, the, uh, and then, of course, if you pre-order at the – or during this weekend, we also have a limited edition hardcover we're making. So the pre-orders are kind of determining how many of those there will be. Um, so we will we will be kind of uh, ordering to fill uh, plus some extra plus a little bit of extra yeah. and th those will actually the the hard balance will have a dust jacket they're going to be done full novel style they'll look exactly like a novel from the series right so if you have the hard uh, the hardcover books and you're kind of a hardcore fan those are definitely yeah you can put, stick it on your shelf it will be the same size it will have a similar dust jacket style the whole nine yards except that the inside leaf so that be the inside cover and the back page uh, the flyleaf will also include not only the allomantic map that you've seen before of the, of the symbols in the circle that you've seen on this website, also the new ferrochemical map, which you have never seen, which is all of the original terrace alphabet with what the powers are and the whole nine yards. So it, it's pretty rad, and um, it, it's, it's so cool we actually can't sell it in stores. Um, it's not OSHA certified or something. Um, <laughs> it's radiating awesome. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so anyway, the, the, the deal is basically you get one of these, you get one of these, you get that book, you get it, uh, you get the book also in EPUB and PDF when it releases. Our and very first EPUB book. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So we will be, you'll see this on the Amazon store, you'll see this in, um, in iTunes, uh, things like that. So we're, we're going to branch out and, because we designed the book to actually be EPUB compatible. And, uh, and then we're doing free shipping in the lower 48 and ten dollars to the rest of the world so yeah so you get it, it's a pretty awesome package the book's going to come out in november um around the time that alloy of law the fourth mistborn book comes out it'll be debuting at neon con which is uh the show that we're partnered up with in las vegas right so anybody who can go uh anybody who wants to see the big uh launch of the game that's that's where you'll want to be right 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 but for those of you who just want to get the books and not come to las vegas to lose more money yeah. Um, it, you will be able to get it. It'll be all be shipped to you as soon Not as it the comes show, available. Though. Yes. Yeah. Lose it in the city. The money at the show is well spent. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So that that's the that's a basic pitch. We're also doing uh, pre-orders for Spellbound. I know some Finally, of you have asked about last. Spellbound in the past, or maybe saw it pop up four years ago and wondered when it was going to be finished. Uh, it, it's it's pretty much it's, finished. It's it's very close to finish. <laughs> yes. There's 20 classes, 888 spells. Um, a full GM chapter explaining um, not only how do you use uh, 888 spells, <laughs> but uh, but how do you tweak the magic system in a way that would be it would make the uh, the the, uh, the game run in different ways, mm -hmm. different different popular magic systems that are out on the market. How do you mimic those? Um, what are a lot of the questions that we get? Like Touch of Light is a good example. Um, we love the spell. A lot of people love the spell. It lets people basically um, tear through adventures without worrying about vitality because they can essentially re-up between scenes. But some GMs took issue with it because it just didn't feel realistic to them. So we're offering an alternative version of t Touch of Light for them. There's a lot of little goodies in it like that yeah. to, uh, to really flesh out your game. 
So yes. And that is being pre-ordered here. And if you pre-order it, you get 12 pages of the book, four classes, two feats. Right, yeah. So you can go and get all your forum cred up if you say, well, I'm playing a Reaper. I don't know about you. Yeah. Um, and the Reaper's pretty kick-ass. Yeah. Well, they're all the pretty The things you can do with, uh, with cemeteries is just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have a power called dig in. So I-N-N. -N. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it, you have to go to the double entendre land. Yeah, sometimes so, uh, triple. Um, <laughs> and uh, and uh, we were surprised. We did not expect this at the show. Um, we've received the French edition of Fantasy Craft. We, this is the first time we've seen it. They delivered it to us at the show. Um, so. uh, it's gorgeous. has same interior art as the, the, uh, the book that you already know and love. It uh, has different cover art. Um, and uh, it's available from Seventh Circle over in France. Yeah, so, so. good news to the rest of Canada and uh, and North Africa and of course France. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, highest per capita role playing uh, uh, populace on the planet, yeah. higher than the U.S. Yes. Um, and um, and then we after that we are paving the way for Spycraft Third. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we could title this seminar. What we fought about on the way to Gen Con. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. We, uh, Alex and I do our summit every year right before this panel, uh, right before the show. Um, uh, and uh, the summit always ends with a very long drive to Gen Con where uh, uh, each of us unloads on the other about the things that we don't like about the system and how we can fix them. And uh, um, this time it was, was no different. It was pretty fun. Right, yes, yeah. So I think what we'll actually do is, is uh, just let anyone ask any questions they want because that, that'll be kind of an open field uh, and it's more of a Q&A. Um, and when we shift into the Spycraft third mode, what I think we're gonna do is, is it, uh, we'll, uh, we're gonna pass the, the mic off to a lot of you because we wanna hear some of your thoughts about the system mm -hmm. uh, and get some feedback about a bunch of different things. But in general, um, relating to Crafty Games and its products and its future, does anybody have anything they want an update on? Some things will be classified, but we will do our best. Uh, both drafts of both of the remainders are, uh, remaining ones are done. Uh, art is done. Uh, editing and layout needs do to be Do you explain finished. what Saturday Morning Spycraft is? Saturday Morning Spycraft is a series we did for Spycraft 2.0. It's, uh, it's exclusive to 2.0. It actually is, is, is kind of specifically geared for the brand of, of 2.0 and the flavor of that line. Um, and it's, uh, it's four cartoon series you know and love sort of blatantly ripped off and statted out and, and provided rules and campaign qualities right. for. We've so, already done Real American Heroes, which is G.I. Joe. Um, and, uh, which is <coughs> G.I. Joe. Oh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, okay. sue me, Hasbro. Um, <laughs> no such thing as bad press. If they're going to sue me, they should sue Super Genius as well, because they... they That's true. <laughs> That's true. Strike Force 7. Strike Force 7. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, and the other one that we have already released, um, God, I'm blanking. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, Transmex. 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 Yeah, Transmex. thank you. Yeah, was, I knew the other trans, two that I was about to talk about. Thing. I'm like, what is the other one? So yeah, it's Transmex, which is of course Transformers. Yes. Um, so then the next one is 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 uh, is um, Spookbusters. Spookbusters. Yes. Which, which is fairly <laughs> obvious. Yeah. So. Yeah. And <laughs> and and then there's Stone Sentinels, which is a little bit harder to figure out. It's Gargoyles. Yeah. yeah. So those those are all coming this fall. Yes. Yeah. What else you got? World on Fire. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, thank you. There you go. So World on Fire is going to eat a lot of the time that I'm in uh, shackled to my desk while he's enjoying New Zealand with his wife. Mm. I will be sending him hate mail. Um, <laughs> That's right. Uh, World on Fire. I, I think we've said this before. There. The the plan for World on Fire is that there are two big books, two novellas, and a whole bunch of adventures. Um, uh, everything will be released in, uh, in PDF. The books will be available also in POD um, uh, through our partners at DriveThru. Uh, so you'll be able to get them through LSI, uh, 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 which has done all of our Spycraft 2 uh, reprints, and everyone's loving those so far. Um, the new storyline, uh, well, the, the, this new book will close out the storyline, and it sets it up in such a way that you never need to talk to us again to run your perfect world on fire, uh, 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 fire game. It's, it's, it's leveling out the playing field and saying this is what the world setting will look like in the future and laying a really great place for, for people to launch their own campaigns with. Uh, the era of Pool and, um, and Alex Cole and, and, uh, and Thorne and all of those, all of those stories will be closed out. Um, and at the end of the day, 
uh, the setting is very much squarely placed on where your characters are in the storyline and, and, and where you want to go from there. Um, and of course, this also includes a little faction module for each one of them. So if you want to be the, uh, uh, a Bloodvine character in the New Order, um, uh, this will provide you all the tools to do that. And if you want to be uh, uh, one of the, the neo-anarchists of, uh, of, of uh, Sparks group, that'll, it'll provide you all of that as well. Um, it's still an espionage setting, but it's still got the terror, uh, uh, the terror focus, but uh, it's, it's a little bit different because it's, it's focusing more on what happens after the shift. Everybody know what the big reveal is in the first book? Everybody remember that? No? Uh, it's it's pool, Pool's turn. And so the second book basically deals with pool, what happens after that and, and, uh, and the world that he creates. So. Does that say 2.0? Yeah. Yep. Closing that line out in 2.0, it, it will be a strictly 2.0 line. Yeah. Uh, and between that and Saturday Morning Spycraft, those will close out 2.0 and pave the way for everything we're doing with third edition, which is brand new content, whole new, uh, whole new uh, direction for the line. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited about that. Anything else? That comes uh, about a year from now is what we're expecting. So it depends on when Spycraft drops. Spycraft's going to come first, 10 KB is going to follow. So a lot of work's been done. Uh, everybody's lined up and ready to go. A lot of stuff has been languishing on my hard drive for the last couple years. Um, but yes, we're, we're actually running demos here at the show. Uh, if anybody wants to play some of the, the new class concepts in playtest, they are being playtested at this show. So we've got the thief, we've got the thug, we've got the lawman, we've got the uh, fixer. Well, he's, yeah. Uh, hmm? The fixer, just the fixer. Well, and are you going, and are you going, to, uh, um, are you going to announce the, oh, the yeah, one that yeah. everybody uh, will be really happy After about? talking with everybody last year, we put a wheel man in. So. The wheel man will not be in Spycraft Third. He will be in 10,000 Bullets. Yes, so it makes more sense. You need more traffic cops, getaway drivers. <laughs> smugglers, et cetera, et cetera. So. Yeah, people have asked about that quite a bit. And the, the, the Mastercraft focus is uh, genre setting related. Basically, whenever we release the Mastercraft line from now on, it's going to be focusing, really drilling down and figuring out what that thing is about. And in Spycraft's case, we're selling a genre. Um, we're, we're telling uh, or giving you all the material that you need so that you can tell the story um, that uh, is, is perfect for you in the espionage arena. Uh, 10 KB is a little bit different. It's a hybrid product mm -hmm. um, in that it's uh, a ci city setting and it's a genre. Um, and it's actually kind of a broad genre and a niche genre at the same time because it, yes. it, 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 it's, it specifically tells stories that sort of hit that like 70s um, street crime vibe, but then yes. like all, all the stuff street. that comes off of that. But all yeah. good street crime movies spring from 70s crime film. Yeah, exactly. All That's the point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, everything just sort of comes out of that zeitgeist, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, although Alex has some really neat plans for what came before. Oh, yes, yes. We still so. do want to do uh, some decades with that as well. So yeah. we run different eras. The 70s will be one of those eras. And for those of you who are wondering, um, uh, when you see Spycraft, you're not going to see a lot of military stuff. You're not going to see a lot of terrorism. Um, those things have been sort of specifically excised from the game. They'll come back, but they're coming back in specific modules that you can plug into the game. Because what we found out is that uh, espionage is, is kind of overwhelmed by the, the louder genres. So you can't really mix them very well. So we're not trying. We're saying the core line is espionage. If you want it to be a military game, it's pretty easy to just plug this, this thing into it. Or you want it to be counter-terror, you can plug that into it. Um, and that, uh, that actually works to our advantage because what we found is we can, uh, and when we get to those products, we can actually focus and say, well, what is counter-terror? How do we make just the counter-terror product without having to worry about everything else? Mm -hmm. Yeah? I'm kind of new to your products. I want to work you guys with to work around. Um, yep. Can you give a new player some suggested materials? I like uh, role-playing games. I like all that kind of stuff. Uh, are you new to role-playing games or are you new to us? Just to you guys. Okay, all right. Um, you play D20, I take it? I have. Okay. Uh, Fantasy Craft, which this is the, the French version of the game, but we have the, the, uh, the American version available at our booth, um, is um, all things fantasy. And it's about, what, four generations now removed from core D20, I think. Um, three. Three, three. Yeah. Okay. 